Welcome to another edition of All Up In Your Business. I'm Jay Sokol. I'm Natalie Reese. And we actually have a decent show for a change, Natalie. It is our end of the year edition. Sweet. Sweet indeed. <laughs> so I, I thought that we would talk a little bit about successes from 2019. We would look ahead to 2020 a little bit and, and try to cover as much ground as we could. So let's let's look back and talk about what you believe were successes from an economic development standpoint from 2019. You know, I think when you look um, at our region, so let, let's start there in terms of jobs and workforce and, and businesses that are in our, in our community currently. You know, our, our local economic development corporation really focuses on three main areas. So launch, locate, and grow. So launch your business here. Uh, start. It may be spinning out of Texas a and University. It may be a, a startup that you're working on. Um, currently, it could be growing an existing business, or it could be locating a, a new business moving into, into our community. So when you look back on 2019, in terms of announcements, what we've seen is roughly over 400 jobs that have been announced and, and roughly 63 million in new capital expenditures. So that could be equipment, it could be buildings, it could be um, investment in those businesses here in the region. Now, okay, so I was going to ask, uh, that's not just College Station, but that's the region? That, that's the larger region. Okay. So looking in the okay. Brazos County area, those that, that our EDC has been involved in, you're looking at roughly over 400 jobs. And, that, okay. and that's substantial in, in our community. For sure, because uh, so many of those rooftops will be in College Station. Right? Correct, right. correct. Um, also, I think one of our, our, our big wins this year was a new FedEx ground facility broke ground at our College Station Business Center that's south of town. That business center located near Pebble Creek off of Highway 6 is, there's currently five lots remaining. So we're, we're completing out that business center. Um, we sold a seven acre lot to FedEx. They have just broke ground on a $10 million facility uh, that will improve the, the FedEx delivery capabilities in that part of the county. Um, so that was one of the first uh, lot sales that we've had out there in quite a while. And it really leads us into the Midtown area in terms of new development, uh, ha- putting lots on the ground for new businesses, retail, commercial, office as well. And again, for people who may still be a little confused about Midtown College Station, there is a, a private aspect of, of that area and then uh, a city owned a public aspect kind of talk about how those work together yeah we're, we when we say midtown we're really talking about a geographic area so if you think south of town along highway six that triangle from six to fitch to rock prairie road so that's really college station's midtown and so there's several hundred acres that are owned by a private developer the city has about 600 acres some of that is uh, preserved greenways and walking trails some of that is for new commercial new industrial Um, We also have a park that's out there that will break ground in 2020, a new athletic facility, the uh, Texas Independence Park at Midtown. The first four fields will begin construction shortly after the first of the year. And um, if uh, if the weather cooperates, hopefully we'll have some tournaments there towards the end of the year. So physically, if you go out there right now, it it looks much different at the end of 2019 than it did at the beginning, right? Yeah, and I think we'll continue that trend in 2020. So when you look at those, there's currently when you drive out there, you'll see Lakeway is punched through that connects Fitch all the way over to Scott and White Hospital. Um, Scott and White Hospital is also working on an expansion Mm -hmm. uh, that they're that they're working on currently. Um, You'll see new homes that are going in. That's part of the private development on Midtown. It was always planned that the residential would go first. Uh, That's typically how it works. Residential uh, rooftops go in first. And, resi- and retail follows. Um, we were also seeing the Huntington that's a uh, age-restricted multifamily facility that's currently under construction. So when you look at, at College Station a year from now, I think that's an area that, that is really going to change with new development on the landscape. Now, I know during this past year, you have been shopping around the Midtown development to, to a lot of folks. Um, who do you feel like is is expressing at least some kind of interest in what is happening there early on? You know, one of the things that, that we've tried to focus on at the local level and at the regional level is really focusing on those industries that make sense here in College Station. I, I think in the past we've taken more of a shotgun approach, you know, that, that of course anybody that has a business would want to be here. It makes sense, right? Because we're here. Sure. Um, but in looking at what makes sense from our community, from our workforce standpoint, from the research efforts that are happening at Texas A&M, what are those, those industries, those broader categories that make sense? And you really look at it from a mobility 
healthcare sustainability standpoint and looking at, at businesses in those particular industries. And we've really worked hard this last year, not only getting lots on the ground that, that are ready to go, um, our first ones in the Midtown area are really more for corporate headquarters. So we're looking for light manufacturing in some of those areas, advanced manufacturing, and office uses as well. And, and that's where we're starting to see some interest. So while we're in that part of College Station, while we're talking about things sort of south, um, there's a whole lot going on in terms of, of new residential. Uh, I know you've talked in the past about Southern Point and Millican Reserve and Mission Ranch. What is all that starting to mean for you? So, as I mentioned earlier, retail follows rooftops, right? So right. when you see where our, our residential development is occurring, you're right. It's the old the Texas World Speedway, the Southern Points. Um, Pebble Creek is continuing to develop. Um, the Greens Prairie Reserve, they're putting their first two phases on the ground now. Um, we're going to continue to see residential grow south. So what that tells me is that we're going to continue to see more retail, more commercial, and more office space in that area. We, we've seen some of that around the Arrington Road um, intersection with the Caprock development. Mm -hmm. They have a new office complex that's under construction. They'll have uh, a restaurant component that's part of that. Costa Vida will be located in there. Um, we're already seeing walk-ons and tads and, and some really literally local flavor that, that's locating at that intersection with the Mad Tacos of the world and the RX Pizzas and Casa do Brazil. Um, I think we're going to continue to see commercial growth focused in that area on some of the new rooftops that are coming in. So for anyone who is asking, why are you calling this area of College Station Midtown? Because it is literally the expansion that's happening south. It really is becoming that center of College Station. Yeah, it, it, geographically, it is the center of College Station. But when you look at growth over time, it, it was really skipped over because of there was so much infrastructure that was required to develop that triangle. So uh, for those of you that have lived here a long time like you and I have, I remember when Pebble Creek was first under construction. I thought that was closer to Navasota than it was to College Station, sure. but now now it's more central yeah. um, and on almost the geographic center of our city. So do you want to talk about some of the retail successes from 2019 that is kind of out in that part of the city? Yeah, you know, retail's been interesting. That, that was part of the low-hanging fruit that when mm -hmm. I first started here that, that you could really capitalize on. Now, are you going to be able to, can we sustain that success over a long period of time? No. I mean, it, it's really going to be more targeted and more focused on uh, some of the specialty retailers and more entertainment. Now, where I think we have seen success is in the Caprock area and Tower Point and the Lowe's um, around that intersection. We've seen, we've seen quite a bit of success with restaurants there when you continue down 47 you know the you see new developments like the urban table that's, that's located there uh, BCS fitness a, a, a different multi-story mix of commercial uses in that area that's that's interesting when you when you come along Welburn Road I think we'll continue to see more commercial demands in that area we already have with Jones Crossing. I mean, that's really mm. turned into a destination over the last two years with HEB, Mod Pizza, um, Smush Cookies just announced that they're going in there, some sort of cookie, ice cream, topping, sugar. Sounds awesome. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I Heart Mac and Cheese has just announced that they're putting two locations in town. One is at Jones Crossing, and the other one would be at Century Square. You're telling me we're going to be a two I Heart Mac and Cheese town? That's what I'm telling you. Whew. Big what a, stuff. What I a know. time to be alive. I know, exactly. <laughs> sure. Well, okay, so so do we need to talk about any other part of College Station in terms of Chimney Hill or along Northgate or, or moving around to just talk about 2019 to recap? Not in terms of recap. I think in terms of growth in 2020, mm -hmm. those are the areas where we're going to see continued growth. Of course, those nodes like we talked about with Tower Point and Caprock, um, also looking at the Jones Crossing area, we're going to continue to see more residential and then the, the retail following that. Um, I also see, and, and I don't know if it's a renewed interest, but it's a continued interest in North College Station, so that area along University Drive all the way from Highway 6 down to the Bio Corridor and, and really focusing on more infill development and redevelopment in that area. And Century Square really ties into that. Now, I think you and I have discussed uh, before how there, there is so much 
changing or or the stage is set to be changed in the Northgate area, that 2020 really could bring a big focus on the Northgate area. True? True. I I think a lot of that's going to depend on the continued development of Century Square. Mm-hmm. Um, from what I understand, the plan is to start their phase two, those, those two buildings that will be fronting on University Drive where there's some utility work occurring now. Um, once a few more leases are in place, it's my understanding they're going to start construction in 2020. There's also the hard corner there. And what a lot of people don't realize is that there's an additional 30 acres behind there that the Midway Company has a uh, has leased from the university that will also be future development. Now, that could come in five years and 10 years, just depending on the market. But I I really see that whole central corridor, you know, from, especially from six to Wellburn, including Northgate, North North Point Crossing and Century Square, a really focus on, on developing in that area. So the part you were talking about really backs all the way up to the Hensel Park area. Correct. And then you've got Jack Culpepper's property over there as well that we've talked to about potentially developing right. uh, with some sort of mix of uses. Um, really looking at those additional commercial uses. We've seen so much residential in that area develop in Northgate mm-hmm. and Century Square and North Point Crossing over the last five years. So about 7,000 beds over five years. So I think we're starting to see the retail benefits from that. So what do we need over there? I mean, you probably have some things on your wish list. I know we've talked about how everybody has has at least looked at the area because Mm -hmm. of the proximity to Texas A&M, but it seems like some kind of a grocer would be um, a sensible thing. Um, Some kind of, something that's offering goods and services and not just, food and drink options, I guess. Yeah, you know, in looking at the number of, of beds that are over there now, we've got to have some fresh food options. Yeah. Um, whether that's, uh, I'd love to see a grocer come into that area. But when you look at, at the trends of our grocery business over, I mean, nationally, the trend is going away from smaller grocery stores to these mega ones. I mean, mm. look at the new HEB out at Jones Crossing. Yeah. You know, you, you have everything in one place. They do everything. I, exactly. Yeah. You don't have the mom and pop stores anymore. And so I, I can tell you some of the folks that we're reaching out to to create some interest is um, Target has a new urban model that's more walkable. They're not doing, uh, they're, they're doing very little in terms of their superstores. I see. Um, so they're, they're looking at something more walkable in a more dense area. Now what that does, it, it, it brings in some of the other household goods, but they also offer some fresh groceries as part of it. Yeah. Um, you could also, uh, so they're, they're one of the groups that, that we're working on to say, look, we've got this really concentrated dense area trying to find those specialty grocers, those general merchandise groups that, that would come in there and do something, be open to doing something a little bit different. Okay, so can we talk about some some rough spots from 2019? Can we do that? Sure. Okay, because not everything goes our way. Correct. Some, sometimes <laughs> stuff happens at the last minute or whatever. Yeah. So let's just address the uh, the big beaver nugget in the room. We're still we're still friendly and we're still in conversations with the Bucky's folks, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, it, it's just finding the right location that they can get under contract um, that meets all their needs. Right. And that's something that being a third party as a city is, mm-hmm. is it, for me especially, is tough because I just want to make it happen. Right, you know, sure. You guys communicate and make this contract happen, and, and uh, we'll help you on the permitting side. Um, Have so, you told them we'll offer them a, a, a podcast of their own, like, like an episode of their own? If, yes. If they decide to seal the deal. I'm sure that would put Beaver over the, the edge. We'll let's, do that. Let's do that, sure. Okay. Okay. Um, there's been some changes at Post Oak Mall. Yes. Yes, there has. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, and, and you know, again, Post Oak Mall is seeing what we're seeing nationally right. uh, on these larger malls, more regional uh, malls and seeing some of the bigger boxes. Just just nationwide, these retailers don't need as much space. Yeah. Right. They're really focused on multi-channel retail delivery of goods it's not just all online it's not there's pickups there's you don't need as much space anymore to like i need to go in and kind of touch everything before i make a decision okay Um, now sears has been on the market for a while i think in 2020 we've seen enough interest in that location that that we'll see at least part of that building be occupied in 2020 if not all of it you've said it would be great to have 
something or somebody come in and take the whole thing, but that's that's going to be hard to do. When you're looking at 80,000 square feet of uh, roughly 80,000 square feet of space, there are just a handful of retailers that would even look at something that big, yeah. be willing to take that on. Um, so I think what's either going to make sense is from someone to take it down from a from a entertainment perspective mm-hmm. to be able to use that space for something that that. Um, that I would prefer to see there. But I, I think more likely what we're going to see is it carved up, someone someone will buy it, carve it up into maybe two or three retailers. And do I remember correctly, that is a Sears-owned footprint. That is not owned by Post Oak Mall folks. Right, and, and that's what's unique about, about our mall here. Sears owns their building and their dirt. Same thing with Dillard's. They own their building and their dirt. CBL and Associates, that is the manager of the mall, they own the interior and then a couple of the outbuildings, like, like Bell's. Um, but the, so when you talk about a redevelopment, there are multiple property owners that have to participate in something like that to, right. to kind of reinvent the mall or you know, mix the uses up. Right. Okay, so here's another curveball for you. Um, I, I know that you and your office, uh, you guys do what you do every year, and you're working to diversify the economy and bring good jobs here. But we, every year, ha- tend to have some change in our elected leadership. And I know we will have two new faces on this city council mm-hmm. um, in 2020, in early 2020. How does a change in elected leadership affect you, affect our approach to economic development, or does it not really affect you so much? No, I, it, 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 look, it'll definitely have an effect. You know, we our council gets together every year and puts together their focus areas that they want us to really concentrate on the next year or two um, as part of their overall plan and, and what we're going to fund and what we're not going to fund. So that will definitely impact our economic development efforts. But I will say, I think there are still some things that we all agree upon in, in, in terms of what is going to help diversify our economy. And mm-hmm. that's really jobs and, and higher paying jobs. We're seeing folks like Fuji that's in the bio corridor. They just announced an expansion with their process innovation center that will bring 100 jobs to this community on the average of about $80,000 a job. Those are game changers for us. If we could get a few of those wins across the community, I mean, that is really what's going to drive our economy. Folks that have higher paying jobs, that have disposable income, that can help support the retail and commercial uh, efforts that we have here currently. Yeah. So a change in elected leadership, it may nuance your approach, but not a, it's not a seismic change. I, I don't think it's a fundamental change. I, I think I think we could tweak a few things here and there. Um, but overall, um, I, I think this council, regardless of, of where you really see those, those um, concentration of efforts, economics always at the top economic mm-hmm. development's always at the top to make right. sure that we can pay for those programs that that uh, we want to implement elsewhere that we can pay for those basic services how about the way that you work and that we work with texas a and university when it comes to economic development how how has that evolved in 2019 and and what does it look like you will be doing with a and m in 2020 you know uh, We've really established a a strong partnership over the last, I would say, five years. So whether it's Texas A&M University System and Chancellor Sharp and working with him on the Century Square development, the new Brookshire Brothers development, the P3s that they've been involved Mm in, um, they've really branched out into the the, uh, retail and commercial aspect. I mean, we're all looking at ways to improve sources of revenue uh, to help with basic services. One of the things recently in, um, that, that some of the issues that we're both seeing is providing things to do for our faculty, our students, our residents, uh, kind of focusing on those entertainment issues. And, and I was recently visiting with some folks at, um, at the university and we were talking about our outreach efforts for entertainment. And there were some uh, similar, if not identical, users that we were both going after, whether it was for a temporary event at Reed Arena or at Kyle Field or a permanent location here in town for a sports event or more of a, um, we call it retailtainment, so the the food and and, um, uh, sports side of things too, like your your golf facilities, your um, movie, your mega entertainment centers. Mm -hmm. Uh, But they were going after some of those same types of uses 
for a little bit of different reasons, right? Because we both, both want to provide those types of um, entertainment venues here in our community. So I think being able to partner more with them to offer, look, here's here's a temporary way that you could come into our community for an eight week or a 12 week stint and then maybe look at a permanent location. And so we're gonna work on some of those in, in 2020. I think Relis is also a game changer for us and just trying to figure out how that's going to impact businesses that are coming here, especially with Army Futures, mm -hmm. and some of the technology and businesses that, that surround that. So if you're really looking at technology from the Department of Defense side and looking at those products and the development, wouldn't you want to be right here in College Station to develop that technology and develop that next part, mechanism, whatever it might be, sensor, developing that right here next to Army Futures? I like the way you think. Hey. So you've been holding back on me, right? There's some big announcement. There's the big reveal. You've got something for us, right? So, yes, my, my five years here in College Station, all I have heard, is it, and so 90% of this has been from you. You know, I've got to have some Dunkin' Donuts coffee right so we've been working with them closely over the last several years and they are coming to town in 2020 they have found a location they've signed a lease they will not allow me to release where that's going to be just yet are you kidding me no i'm not they're really coming they're really coming they've told me they're coming they're looking at a potential second location um they haven't signed a lease on that second location but the first location will open in 2020 Give it to me right here. I will buy you the first cup of coffee. That is fantastic. Like Would you say it's taken five years? Five years, yes. Congratulations to you on never giving up. The pinnacle of my career right here my in Dunkin' gosh. Donuts. So are we good for 2019? We're good for 2020? I think so. Do we leave anything out? God, I, as, as soon as we <laughs> stop filming, I'll remember something. Okay. But. Well, I, this was a good year for us because we transitioned from our, our previous podcast, Is This a Thing? Yeah. We created this new one, All Up in Your Business. I am um, holding you accountable to doing more of these with me in 2020. Okay. And then we're going to try to bring in some guests along the way. So it's going to be a good year for All Up in Your Business. I like it. I, I think we ought to move our listeners up to in the double digits this year oh. in 2020. All right. Let's do it. What a goal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that closes out 2019. All Up in Your Business was written and produced by absolutely no one, as you can tell. Uh, you can send your criticisms to Natalie Ruiz at nruiz at cstx.gov. And, of course, send your questions, show suggestions, and praise to me at jsokol at cstx.gov. All Up in Your Business is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, and YouTube. Find out how to do business in College Station by visiting grow.cstx.gov and shop local. Thanks, Nat. Thank you.